is working. All right, welcome to episode number 58 of 10K on the Bay. Uh, my journey to 10,000 active items on eBay. Today I'm gonna go over uh, exactly what to buy to make $1,000 a week on eBay. If you guys are on Instagram, you should log on to YouTube because you'll be able to see my screen. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go over exactly how to make $1,000 a week on eBay, which is the goal of my Patreon group if you join it. That's what I'm gonna show you what to do. All right, let's get into it. Um, let me guys know if you guys if you can see my screen. Once you guys confirm you can see my screen, I'll go into it to show you guys how to make it um, to 1,000 a week on eBay, which is the goal. Uh, a lot of people are saying, I wanna quit my job, but I need to make at least $1,000 a week. Well, I'm gonna show you, and also in my new store, you can watch me do it. I think it'll take me two to three months to get to $1,000 a week on the new store. Um, okay, great, cool. So this is how you make $1,000 a week on eBay. I'm gonna show you with real examples from my second store. Um, I have a, I'm cheating a little bit because I have a social media following, so it'll grow, mine will grow faster than yours, but that's okay. Um, actually, it won't grow faster if you start your social media right now to make it work. But anyway, let's get into it. Um, what to buy to make $1,000 a week on eBay. So, if you wanna switch to your job, you gotta consider eBay sort of your profession. And so, your nine to five, if you wanna make $1,000 a week, is to buy, list, and, really, is, oh, no. is this my diary? What are you talking about? Um, okay, you, your, your nine to five is to buy, list, and sell. Um, $1,000 worth of profit a week. So basically, um, let's get into it. You can do this in different ways. You can do $200, or you can sell 200 items that are $5 profit, and this is like generic items, like Banana Republic, Gap, Old Navy, or like new with tags items that are um, sort of replenishable. I would be okay in the $5 profit region. And how I'm gonna, I'll give you guys some examples of this. So in my store, Loki Husky, here's a uh, Old Navy uh, hoodie that I listed that I got for free. So a lot of items, I recommend you guys get stuff. Um, a lot of you guys need to get stuff that's around the house when you're starting. And so you're looking here on this Old Navy shirt, I basically got for free. Free, sh it's gonna cost me $5 or something to ship this because it's over one pound. So this is not a good, this is an example of sort of, of what not to do, but it is a good thing to get started to learn how to list. Um, this is only gonna net two or three bucks, but it's okay because we're just starting and learning. This account started at zero feedback exactly one month ago. So you guys can do it too. I think your store really starts to pick up pace once you have over 100 feedback because people are gonna trust you more. Um, right here on this cause shirt, you guys know I picked up probably three or 400 of these t-shirts. They've cost $15. Uh, they cost a little bit less with the gift card that I used. Um, so at $27.68, I'm actually netting more than $5 even with the charity. So um, that's, this is a good flip and an example of a replenishable item. Um, see, there's three available here. So I only did one listing, but I'm able to make $15 on it. Um, buying a couple hundred t-shirts really helped um, with this $5 margin item. It should make it really easy. Okay. Um, I have a bunch of replenishables, and then I, let's see if I have any more $5 shirts. So like right here, this is an Apple uh, uniform that I found um, at the Goodwill bins. So got it for 50 cents. Probably going to make three to five dollars on it. I'm actually listing this well below market. These sell for like 15 bucks, but I'm going for cheaper uh, because I'm trying to move some volume. Um, also, um, this J. Crew shirt I purchased for uh, 75 to 95% off, so I'm gonna make at least five dollars on this J. Crew new with tags item, which I'll go over in just a second. But just giving you an example that the easiest to buy is a $5 profit margin item. If you wanna make $5 an item, that's super easy. You can get that anywhere. Most of the stuff around your house is worth at least $5 profit. So start there. Um, the next one is, um, oh, Deb, does my Loki Husky account have a listing limit? It's, it's tied to my other store because like, um, this is a good point. Um, a lot of you guys 
don't have, um, you'll have listing limits because you're just getting started. This account is in PayPal jail, so I have to wait 21 days to get my money out of this account, which is kind of annoying because um, you're looking at a, you know, actually, I'll show you guys right now um, how annoying this is live. So, log into my PayPal. Um, so you can see there's fourteen hundred dollars on hold in this account, which is super annoying, right? Because you have, um, you know, a lot of you guys are trying to get started in this inventory. That your money is stuck in PayPal because you're in PayPal jail, which is going to take you three to six months to get out of, which is very real. So I get it. If you guys are starting, please just be patient. It's going to take a while to hit my bank account uh, so that I can reuse it to buy more inventory, which has sort of slowed the growth on this new store. But that's okay. Um, I just want to show you guys that um, be patient with PayPal jail. You'll get out of it in within 90 to 180 days, and you can use that time to learn how to do eBay better. Um, okay. So, and how, or I had a lot of questions on how you link your eBay accounts. eBay links it for you based on your IP address. So, because I'm in the same house as my other store. It knows that I'm the same person in the same household. So it started me with a 500 limit and $25,000 um, to start. And I know a lot of you guys have a 10 or 100 item limit on this uh, to start, which is brutal. It's tough. But again, be patient. Um, navigate yourself around um, eBay, learn brands, go on the Instagram, follow all the people that you want to sell to learn what you're selling. And this is key because that's why I'm saying I'm going to be leveling up this a lot faster than you guys because you have, um, um, because I have previous experience and it's linked to my old account. So eBay already trusts me. That's why I'm starting at a higher um, listing amount. Um, Deb is saying it used to be if you have 25 feedback, you'll be out of PayPal jail. As you guys can see, I already have 54 feedback um, and no. I'm not out of PayPal jail yet, so I'm going to be stuck here. I called them yesterday and asked about this, and they're like, um, four days after it's been delivered, three or four days after it's been delivered, you can call them and they'll release the funds. Um, but that's yeah, that's kind of a it's kind of tough to um, to deal with that when you're just starting. But again, be patient. Join a bunch of Facebook groups for free. Learn learn stuff, and then you'll be fine once that time uh, comes off. Um, yeah, the logo is awesome. Shout out to Hustler Hacks, Glenn Zubia. That guy is awesome. He's doing all my design work, and also he's going to do all my merch shirts, which is exciting. Um, okay. So the next thing you can do, so $205 items is a lot of work, right? You got to go hustle your ass off, basically listing. You don't have to hustle yourself sourcing because it's easy to source $5 items. Everything is worth $5 at the, th at the thrift store for the most part. So um $10 items are sort of medium brand. So if we go into um, my, my store, I'll show you guys real quick. Um, a medium brand I would consider like J. Crew. I'm going to make it at least $10 um, on these J. Crew items. I picked up all these shorts for about $8 to $10 um, using gift cards and um, using gift cards and uh, Clearance section. So I went into the mall. Uh, J. Crew is a medium brand. I bought all the clearance items for whatever the gift card discount was, um, and then I ended up trying to buy as many as I could that were the same. So I got a bunch of shorts that are the same design, just a different size, which saves time on listing. So that's another pro tip. If you can get multi quantities, you can speed up your leveling up of eBay. Um, also, something interesting: um, you guys can't tell how many items I've sold. Because completed listings won't show. Um, here, let's go here real quick. This is how you search for completed listings. You scroll down, you click sold. This is how you see what somebody sold, right? So it says that I've sold 96 items, including this Hello Kitty suitcase, which is <laughs> awesome. And I picked it up at a garage sale for um, either two or three bucks. So that, that's a good come up. But it says here that I sold 96 items, right? But if I go into my eBay, um, I actually have 151 orders. So that, that's because I have a lot of quantity, multi-quantity items that are not showing up. So that's interesting when you guys look at, um, when you're creeping other people's stores, you may not actually not be able to see how well they're doing 
because you can't see they're completed, uh, which is like um, a way that you can you can hack into what is making other people um, do well. Um, and I, and I have one return so one return request out of 158. So returns are still low. Um, um, Deb is saying that they'll release your money if you get a positive feedback. Most of that's automated. Like I would say that the majority of my funds, because I've already had six six thousand something in sales, right? Only two thousand is in PayPal jail. So most of it is releasing before the 21 day threshold, either because of a positive feedback or if the tracking number is shown delivered and three more days. So, um, I, and it's not, it's not guaranteed. Um, it's some, like I have some transactions that haven't been delivered that have been released and some that have been delivered and are not released. So it all sort of balances out. Um, okay. So those are, these are the $10 items, um, that are the medium brands that are very easy. You can go to, um, I'll go over where to get this stuff in just a second, but $10 items is pretty easy. On my larger store, you guys can see, uh, which I'm going to share starting on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, I'm gonna share both my stores. I'm going on to eBay Radio um, on Tuesday, and I've decided that I'm gonna share both my stores for better or worse. I'm just gonna do it because I'm sick of asking, sick of answering what my other stores are, so I'm just gonna share. Um, okay, so $10 items are medium brands. I really like $10 items. Um, they they're everywhere and they're easy to find. And I'll go over how to do that retail arbitrage, which I think is actually easier than the thrift store. Okay, now we're going into um, $20 or more items. If you just bought 50, 20 or more items, then you're listing, if you're full time, you're only listing 10 items per day and still making $1,000 a week, which is a great job, right? You're listing 50, 10, or, uh, 10 items per day, you're shipping 10 items per day and you're making $1,000 a week. This is sort of a dream job. 50 items is if you're outsourcing, you're looking for 10 items that'll make you $20 profit. Totally doable for anybody, but it takes more time. Don't expect to find 50 items in two hours. Like it takes 20 hours of looking around to find items that are gonna net you $20. Here, I'll give you an example of my store of um, like this coach bag. This is actually a little bit higher than $20 profit, but I got this for $10 at a garage sale. It's a coach bag. It should sell for it should sell for 78 bucks. There's already 10 watchers on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that um, this will sell at the asking price of 78. These are trending right around 80 to 90 bucks. Um, and then again, I like natural lighting. So you guys can see, I took these pictures outside. Um, I probably shouldn't have put it on the ground. I should have hung it on something. But you know, natural lighting is cool because you can see all the different designs. Make sure when you sell luxury goods, take pictures of the stitching so people can tell whether or not it's authentic. Um, people are afraid to sell high-end goods because they're probably selling fakes. If you're not selling fakes, you have nothing to worry about. Take great pictures. Um, you know, take a picture of all the tags. Um, I should have rotated this picture. It's a total rookie move. Um, Take a picture of the inside condition. Um, luxury bags are very, very, very easy to sell. But again, you got to watch out for authenticity. Don't sell fake stuff. It's not worth losing your account. Um, I have been selling luxury stuff for a long time. I understand stitching. Um, I understand if things are crooked. And I know a lot of the telltale signs that items are fake. So um, make sure if you're going to sell luxury items, you know what you're doing. The resource that I use to verify is called Purse Blog. So purseblog.com, you can go on there, um, submit something. You can also pay people to authenticate for you. Whatever you need to do, don't sell fake stuff. Fake stuff reflects what you are on the inside, which is fake. Don't support fake things, it really bothers me. Okay, um, the reason for the return was one of my items was damaged during shipping. Um, so I had to accept the return. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if, it was the switcheroo. I haven't received the item back yet, but for me, most of the time, I just accept the return no matter what. I don't investigate it because it's not worth my time to um, think about a return. I, I value my time at $250 an hour, so like a return is really not worth my time ever. Usually, I just have them keep the item, but it was a new with tags item, so I'm going to get it back and see what happened to it. Okay, so now we have the $100 plus items. Now, we're talking about probably jewelry or super high-end luxury stuff. 
Um, if I had unlimited money, you guys know I would sell this. I would literally have 10,000 Rolexes and it would fit in my freaking bedroom and I would make $18 million a year. That's how much money I would make if I sold 10,000. If I had 10,000 Rolexes in stock, on the average profit margin of what people make, I'd make $18 million a year. But that's hard, right? You gotta have enough money to buy 10,000 Rolexes, which is millions. That's probably at least 5K. It cost me, um, what is that? What's the math on that? Either, I can't, I don't know the math in my head, but million, it would cost me millions of dollars to have 10,000 Rolexes in stock. But I'll give you an example of this um, in my store. Um, I only have one item that's that's worth $100 profit right now since I just started, which are these Supreme shoes. I think I paid um, $180. i am positive these are going to sell for more than $300, which should make me at least $100 profit, right? And I'm in no hurry. These are super crazy looking. Um, they're olive. Um, with these shoes, you want to make sure you include a tag for the most part. Like I put my username in the photo to make sure that people know I have the item. So even though this looks super ghetto, it's helping me sell it because people know I have it. And um, you want to take as many pictures as possible to help people with authenticity. Um, Supreme is the godfather of, of, uh, of brands. Um, I did not use a bot to buy these, but um, I'm, I'm getting into the bot game because I really like Supreme and it's fun. I like streetwear. So um, it's important to take different kinds of pictures. Um, if you guys notice, a lot of my higher end items, I take a picture. Um, I take a picture in my house versus with a white background because the higher end items, I feel like um, the stock photo actually reduces the authenticity of the item. I don't know why. Just for me, I like to see high end goods in somebody's house. Um, that's just me. So this is a hundred dollar profit item. You'd only need ten a week to sell, you only need to sell 10 $100 items to make $1,000 a week. And that's something that is crazy. So Floss and Daily says I don't need to do a bot, but like I want to get tons of items. Like I, I don't need a bot to get a few, but I want to get hundreds of release items. So I definitely um, want to invest in a couple of bots. If anybody knows anybody, hit me up in the DM. I definitely want to get in on that because why not? Technology is here. Um, I have seen people get hundreds of pairs. If you guys look at my Instagram, there's a guy named Mr. Deadstock, and okay, he'll get 75 pairs of a shoe that makes $100, right? So how is he doing that, right? He's got connections, he's got bots, he's got all of the above ways of getting that product. He is in this market of only selling $100 plus items, but he also has fat stacks of money to do that because it's very hard. Right to, I mean, who doesn't want to sell like? I would consider Supreme like the crack cocaine of the of the um, streetwear culture. Like you could put Supreme on an Apple and it would sell for a hundred bucks, right? So that's that's that game. So this is giving you guys an idea of what you can do to make a thousand dollars a week. You can do two hundred five dollar items, which is easy to source but hard to list. And then if you're getting the hundred dollar plus items. You might be waiting in line. You might be doing a lot of research on magazines to find out what's hot. Those are tough. Um, or sometimes in that market, you can get stuff like Nintendo Switch or you can get really, really hot, trendy toys. Those items, I like to sell locally because then there's no returns. Um, you can make $100 profit more on those. But again, I don't have enough money to do that properly. So um, I think you need to be able to wait one year to flip that stuff. Um, okay. Cool. So where to buy these items? These are the four places you should start. You don't even need to source any other places to make $1,000 a week. First, sell all your possessions. There's no out-of-pocket stuff on this. Like People are saying, man, people troll like crazy. Let me look at my store real quick. Um, let me see here. So people will look at my store. This is an awesome thing. It, it, I'm trying to be positive, but I kind of want to slap people after listening to, okay, so like, for example, um, look, we'll look at my, my items. Let's see if we can get a, why is it this category? Um, see other items. Okay, so people will say, people will look at my store. This is fantastic. I would love, 
I would love to slap some people today about this. But anyway, actually, I'm not a violent person, so I will just kindly ask you not to troll me. Okay, so let's look at this thing. We have um, a Hello Kitty luggage, right? This item I purchased for a couple of dollars, sold for $48. I'm gonna make a $40 profit on this item, right? The This shirt I bought like hundreds of, and I'm making at least $5 an item. So some people will say, it's not my it's not worth my time to sell something for $5. Well, what if you buy 100 of that item? Is it, is it still not worth your time? Is your time still not worth $500 an hour? Because when I was doing this cause flip, I think I was making $400 an hour. So if you're above making $400 an hour and you don't want to list multi-quantity, I don't understand your methodology. There are no giant sellers on eBay and Amazon that don't purchase in quantity. There's like, I think I can count on one hand how many eBay sellers I know that have a massive business with, with used items. It's very hard. Um, anyway, so people were saying, hey, how do you make money on this pair of shorts that you sold for $9.79 free shipping? The way I made money is because I was teaching people to sell stuff around the house, and this pair of shorts I already had, it was essentially free to me. I don't wear this pair of board shorts anymore. That's just money in the bank. This is the um, seed money that you need to buy other stuff. Um, here you have um, a dock that I bought. Uh, I cheap sold this Mac dock that I bought for $4 at a thrift store. Um, but yeah, I was looking for items that I want to make $20 profit or more. And I went to a thrift store. And in an hour, I only found one item that was $20 or more. This is like right on the money, 20 bucks, because I overcharged for shipping a little bit. Um, so just barely made $20 on this dock. But it was okay, because I'm learning some discipline as far as like you, you have a, a specific model. And in my low-key Husky store, the stuff in here that's, that's not... Um, is twenty dollars or more profit for the most part, except for the things that were around my house. Um, so this H and M sweater, um, again, like a two or three dollar profit because it shipped in a flat rate envelope. Um, this is a sweater that somebody left at my barbecue. So I was like, I'll just throw it up in true reseller fashion. Nobody claimed it. Got that item for free. It's up. That's a hundred percent ROI. Um, here's a retail bag, five fifty nine. Why would you sell for five fifty nine? when we know it's, uh, it's $2 and 61 cents to ship this because it's four ounces, right? So this is a very slim profit. We're talking a one under $2 profit on this item, but I have 139 of them, okay? So like I'm gonna be making one or $2 139 times over the course of, of this selling, right? So that's worth my time. It's a, over $100 an hour for me to, actually it wasn't, it took me, um, Let's look at this listing. It took me three minutes to make this listing and I only have two pictures, the front and the back of it, right? And I put in the title, the measurements, 16 by 16. So try to include the measurements in the, in the, uh, in the um, yeah, when you guys are, are describing things, please put the measurements in, unless you wanna spend a lot of time answering questions, which I don't, um, put the measurements in the title. If there's a stain, I put the, the title, I put the stain in the title and the description, and I point to it to make sure people don't um, buy. Actually, I'm like, I'm gonna show you an example of that, um, which is, actually, I'll get to it in just a second. We'll go through my items real quick. Um, another $5 profit t-shirt. Um, I sold literally hundreds of these. A lot of them also, I sold uh, on Instagram. So it wasn't just, um, uh, eBay because people on Instagram would say, hey, I want those because I tagged them. And so I was able to sell at least 50 of them on Instagram also. Um, this, this is an example of a um, unfair advantage. I live in Oakland, right? So the Golden State Warriors play basketball here. They give away stuff all the time. I went to this booth. I got these doubles, these flags that were signed by this dude. I sold them for $12.99 plus shipping for free, right? That's 100% margin. This is a great way to start. Um, look for things that are free and you're learning how to do eBay, right? This isn't, this isn't making me rich, but it's fun for me to learn how to sell. I like selling things, which I think you guys need to have that skill. If you don't like selling things, okay, let me give you an example. If I told Deborah, who's in the chat right now, you can make money on parting out appliances. She actually, she's already, I learned that from her. But if I told her that, she would go to the thrift store 
and look at appliances and look for what different pieces sell for. That's what she would do with that information, right? Because she's already a seasoned reseller. But if you're brand new, you sort of need to stick to what you know because um, I'll get into that in just a second. Because if you don't know you, and you don't know how to learn how to learn something, then you're in trouble. Um, when I was listening to uh, when I was listening to Craigslist Hunter um, last night, he was talking about having a lot of experience. When you have a lot of experience, I think the main difference is you know how to research an item. Something comes in, you can quickly diagnose whether or not it's going to make money or not. That's what experience does for you. You either remember something from a previous time, or you can quickly look it up. That's what experience does for you. Um, Kareem says, "What do I do with multi-quantity listings? Do I do?" Good till canceled or 30 days. I do 30 days because I like to revise my items. Um, but I understand good till canceled. You lose your listing after 30 days when you do it my way. But I just like to adjust. And I don't have anything with super, super high quantities. All my stuff is 10 items or less. So it usually sells out quickly. Um, Kim, what's up? Um, I If you just DM me on Instagram or email me at 10k on the bay at gmail.com, I'll send you a lucky cat. Um, no charge. Okay. Here's another hype item. I bought these shoes for 150. I sold for 368. Like um, obviously, if I had the dough, I would only sell high-end sneakers. I've already talked about that. I know how to do that already. So if somebody wants to bankroll me 100 grand, uh, we can double our money every 90 days. I already know how to do that. Um, and it's it's a little bit fun, but honestly, it's more of a hustle, not a business, because it's hard to teach somebody to. It's hard to scale hundred dollar plus items without a lot of money because you have to pay off people from what I've seen. Um, it's a purchase relationships um, or build them over time in order to get a high quantity. Like if you guys are, um, I think somebody like Mr. Deadstock on Instagram would be able to get a hundred pairs of these from years of building up relationships and um, however he has done it, multiple stores are giving him pairs of multiple pairs. Um, yeah, let's talk about the, the good till cancel for multis in a little bit. Um, okay, let's go to the other stuff I sold. This calculator I got for free. Um, this Uncle Sam, I got an estate sale. I went to an estate sale and I picked up three items. Two of them sold. I bought the three items for, I think, $4. Uh, actually, no, I paid $10 for three items because I really wanted this airplane. But these two items, I bought this Uncle Sam for $2 and these patches for $2. So um, I'll show you the airplane that I really wanted that I sort of wasted money on in just a second. Um, don't smoke your own supply. Stop using the stuff that you're going to sell. Um, that's a really good tip too. Don't, don't do that. Um, obviously, I like sneakers and know them. I picked these up at Plato's Closet for, I think, 20 bucks, and they sold for 50-something. So shoes is the easiest way, in my opinion, to get the $20 profit margin. Um, okay, let's go back. So garage sale or stuff around your houses first, then go to garage sales. You get the full range of five dollars to five hundred dollars profit at a garage sale. The five hundred dollar profit stuff is like equipment for the most part. You wanna you're getting stuff that's like two, three thousand dollar MSRP that people are selling for a few hundred. That's how you make five hundred dollars at a garage sale in ten minutes, right? Um, you have to have the capital and you have to have some chops and you have to know you have to you know have some good negotiation skills like um, I like to ask questions and for example, let's say I'm trying to buy, I bought these old um, remote control cars um, and I was like, hey, um, the first question was, do you have any more? And a lot of people don't ask that question. I said, do you have any more? The lady had three more. It was super dope. I got um, four brand new RC cars that were like from the 90s, right? So I said, okay, do you have more? She had 25 on the ticket she wanted 25 dollars for it i was like okay this is where i wanted to do um i wanted to do i was thinking these are worth 50 bucks at least and she wanted 25 probably more than 50 but i was willing to bet without doing any research on my phone that they'd be worth over 50 and at that time when i got to the remote control car there were already other people like eagle eyeing me right like oh he found something and I always look like I found something even if I haven't found something that's not a good look you want to look like you can't find shit excuse my language but you want to look like the dumbest person in the room that's the best way to do it I look way smarter than I actually am not good okay 
So I said, do you have any more? And she said, yes, I have three more. I said, great. Can I do 80 for all four? So I didn't want to like lowball her too much because there are already people that are going to buy, buy it for $25 for sure. It's brand new. It's like a 27 year old toy. That's brand new. It's cool. So she's like done. And I got it and I took it straight to my car and I continued shopping um, at the garage sale. So that's one way. Always ask, do you have anything more? Um, that's a good way for me to hack um, sort of a bulk buy. I like to buy things, um, I like to buy things that are um, in bulk. You guys know I like to buy stuff in quantity because I like to maximize my per hour output. So if I'm in a garage sale and I can buy 100 items, I would rather do that. If, if I have listers to list it for me, even better because then it's sort of like, Super, super maximizing my time. Um, Green Granny Resale says, what are my thoughts on a 60-day return policy? I do that on items that are really cheap because I want that extra search ranking. So like if I'm in an item a dollar and I'm selling it for 10, I'll offer the 60-day return because that's like a cheap item, commodity. I needed to rank super high. Um, I'll probably change all my stuff to 60-day returns just because um, – I think it'll give you, there's no reason for that not to give you a boost in the search ranking. And I don't have that many returns to begin with. I've only had one out of 158 so far on this new account. So um, Angel's asking how much I sold them for. Sold one for 113, one for 100, and I still have two left of the remote control cars. Um, let's see here. Let me, I think I missed a couple of questions. Tanya says I'm fancy with three screens. Not that fancy. Um, let's see here. Actually, there's there's software that you can use to do this that I don't know how to use. So I'm just using three windows. Okay. Now we're going to thrift stores. This is the main place a lot of you guys shop. And this advice from Pete Craigslist Hunter is really good, which is the majority of the stuff at the thrift store is going to sell for $30 or less on eBay, right? Less than $30, the majority, 98%. And the skill is to find things that are worth more than $30 at the thrift, right? Because there's not more, there's not a lot of things in the thrift store that cost over $20. Really, there's not. I mean, there are maybe two items that they have in their in their their love case, right? The the case that has all the good stuff in it that they want $20, $30, $40 for, but rarely, right? And sometimes those are the best buys, right? Because I pick up um rare shoes or whatever in there that are worth 60, 70 that I'm buying for 20. Those are, those are, those are awesome. Um, so if we do that, um, that I really, really like is um, buying the high-end items to sell for more money. Spending money to make money is my favorite thing to do at the thrift because usually they don't know what they have. They're just guessing. Um, but the skill, here's the, here's the real skill in the thrift store game and why people like um, Nicole State or um, other or, or Bethany from Just Thrift It, they slay it because they're in there finding the thirty dollar plus items that are listed for under the under five bucks. Right, those are the that takes practice and skill. You cannot just do that. You can't email me and say which one should I buy. It's way too hard. Like that's not you can't. I can't explain to you what. 400 items in the women's section. Which ones are worth over thirty dollars? You got to just practice and learn. Um, spend time in the sold section. Go to Instagram. That's really key and it's important. By the way, guys, if you're in my YouTube, please hit the like. Um, that would really help me out. Okay. So thrift stores are key. The, the magic maker, if you guys like follow Paul Cantu or something on YouTube, he's in there hunting rare vintage items that are worth more than $30. He's to the point now where he has plenty of inventory. He doesn't need to source anything less than that. But when you first start, just do it. Um, just buy things that you're, you should be okay with making $5 profit when you first start. Um, let's see here. Mary's saying, hey, did I start out doing two stores on eBay? No, this, this, I, have a lot, I have tons of stores on eBay, but um, there's going to be the two main ones that I share. And then this store that I'm sharing with you guys, I opened on April 20th. So it's, it's brand new. This account I just started. Um, okay. I just started because I want to show you guys that it's actually possible. What's up, Rick from Chicago? Yeah, I mean, it's going to take me less time because I already know how to resell. But most people, um, it's going to um, take a little bit longer. I actually think it'll take you one year. If you um, join, if you get an accountability partner, 
it doesn't have to be in my group or any group. You just get a buddy that will keep you on track. You have one eBay friend and you guys talk about eBay every week and you grow your store after one year, you'll make a thousand dollars a week profit. Um, because some people have financial restrictions. You're going to have eBay restrictions. It's going to take a while to build up. So be patient, give yourself a year to make a thousand dollars a week. And honestly, that's 52,000 a year is more than the annual income in the United States. And if it only takes you one year to do that without spending any money on, on school, like um, I don't mind when people charge for courses. I think I've bought every single course because I just want to, I'm just looking for nuggets. Like when I read a book, I'm looking for one bolo and that one bolo pays for the book. Like I don't care about spending money to make money. I'm in like five paid groups because I just want to get the cream of the crop information. Okay. Enough on that. So finally, retail stores and outlets. I like retail stores and outlets. It's my favorite. Um, oh, dang, I did not know that. Thank you for letting me know that there's a lot of, well, uh, Angel's letting me know that my IG feed's getting a lot of background noise from the fan of my laptop. That's probably good because I want them to come to my YouTube channel. But thank you, and, and I think that's annoying. Sorry, guys, I get a stand for my, uh, for my phone. Um, retail stores and outlet stores are my favorite. Um, let's go here and look. Um, this, like this pair of shoes, this is awesome. I got it at Costco, right? I looked at this, these Fila um, shoes and I was like, hey, I'll try one. They were, they were $10 at Costco. So I was like, okay, let's try it. Let's put it up on eBay for $22.99. I accepted a best offer of $20, sold one. If I was a true hustler, I would have listed every single size, sold a few more and went to Costco and picked them up. That's one way of doing it. It's like probably a little bit risky because what if you went to Costco and they didn't have any more, but it's Costco. They have so many and they had thousands of these shoes. They're all $10. So I was thinking I really should have listed every single size. I could have made a couple hundred bucks, but I didn't do that. But that's one way to doing retail arbitrage, um, even on eBay. And to be honest, I should have sent these in the FBA because these are selling for sometimes $35 on Amazon, which is even better. So, uh, if you guys want to do it that way, that's a great way to do it. Um, let's see. Joy says, my neighbor is older and does not have the internet but thinks it's cool that I'm selling on eBay. Um, that's awesome. Carol says, how do I change my free store to a paid one? So this is how you do it. You go to your my eBay. Um, actually... I'm here to, uh, this is me managing my store. I can basically, uh, oh, subscriptions. So Google subscriptions, if you guys can't, if you, um, I think it's Carol, right? Carol, if you can't find where to change your store, um, just email me at 10 gmail.com. I will try to walk you through that. Um, but here you can upgrade your store. I have a basic store. I got the basic store day one because I was planning on listing 250 items the first month, but I kind of failed on that. I only listed like 200. Um, but I want to get to this premium store by next month. Um, I guess I have to enter my password again. So by next month, hopefully I can get to a few hundred, uh, close to 500 items in this new store. Um, again, your results will vary. I already know how to resell and I'm planning on trying full time uh, May 29th, um, which should be pretty awesome. Let's see here. Southside Chicago, awesome. I have, a, I have a lot of YouTube following in Southside Chicago. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, but yeah, you guys should follow big Brandon Carter on YouTube. He's one of my favorite YouTubers and he's from Southside Chicago. Okay. So those are the four places I would do your house, garage sales, thrift stores, retail stores, and outlets. My general rule is buy for 75 to 90% off and sell for 25% off. People want a deal on, um, people want to deal on things on eBay. They're not going to pay retail. Now, if you have the money and you want to do FBA, it's better to do Amazon than eBay because you can get full retail for the item. You need a little bit more business chops, a little bit more background to do FBA, in my opinion, because you have to be organized with your money or you're going to be destroyed. You need to be able to um, sustain a hit or being restricted or something with Amazon FBA. It's a little bit more risky, but you're getting a considerable more amount of money for the item. Um, if you guys know, most of eBay is $20 or less. So... That's one of the reasons why I picked that model for my giant store, because if most of this stuff is $20 or less, why don't I sell most of my stuff for $20 or less? But just a theory on that one big store. Um, let's see here. 
How do you find a partner? Okay, so let's do this. How to learn what to buy. These are the hacks that um, basically allowed me to level up. I'm new to thrifting. I just started thrifting um, in, didn't know about thrifting until Rig and Profit, right? So um, I was basically selling my Pokemon stuff and I was like, holy crap, I did not know. Okay. I think I had been to one garage sale before October. I didn't even know this this thing existed. I didn't know the Goodwill's bins existed until like January 29th. I remember that day because of how dramatic it was when I went to the first Goodwill bin. And I was like, how is there this much stuff? And um, you guys know I bought 2,000 pounds, right? About 2,000 pounds of stuff at the bins. And I was like, hey, how often could I do this? And he's like, every day. But you know your your results may vary it might be complete garbage you might be buying two thousand pounds of stuff that people have already looked through and every single item is worth two dollars right so you don't know um so let's see here um okay so this is how you hack how to buy i um consider myself pretty good at networking so i became friends with pretty much every single major reseller on youtube like i've talked to nicole state a lot I've talked to endless entrepreneurs. Uh, I talked to Ronnie Hart. I talked to Deb Pigeon Pesos. I talked to a lot of people. I talked to Just Thrifted. I'm networking with them. And how I network with them is I try to provide some kind of value. So I'm like, hey, um, I was looking at your Instagram feed and you, t you tend to only sell blah, blah, blah. Do you think that's a good brand for me to start in? And they'll be like, no, you're, you're way too noob to do that. You need to start with this or whatever. And that's how you start by providing value to somebody that you don't know, they will help you out and you'll get a little bit of a relationship. And when I first started, I had, um, um, I, I started this mastermind concept because I've had it with different businesses that I've been in. And so I wanted to create groups of people. And so I've got basically all my favorite YouTubers in groups with me. So for example, Prof Sales and Endless Entrepreneurs, those guys, I really like them. So I made my own group with them. I provided enough value to them that they wanted to be in a group with me. And so I was able to hack my way into them. And Luke has taught me more about men's clothing than, than I can even imagine. Like I couldn't even have learned that in the store. I leveled up by just talking to him, learning what he sells, creeping a store, right? And then I'm in the green room, which is a paid, uh, paid membership group. And I, the first thing I did was, who lives in the Bay Area? And I met with those people here. I bought my friend Jake Pancakes. And that was like the best pancakes ever because I bought him pancakes and it turned into like $500 profit because I didn't know how to use gift cards. I didn't know how to do any of that, right? I bought him pancakes. A $20 investment in breakfast made me $500 the same day because we went out sourcing after that and he taught me how to use it. So that's how you network. That's how you get an eBay buddy. I have um, a lot of people that I contact with every day. Um, and we brainstorm different ideas and like you guys know like Deb was asking me What's my end game? My end game is to have a group of 50 people in my mastermind group that I get to basically copy their business model I don't share what people talk about outside of the group But I'm saying that's my end game My end game is if I know what 50 people who are successful on eBay are buying I'm gonna be successful on eBay. I can just copy them. So that's the end game um, I am gonna make money off of my patreon group. You guys can check it out patreon.com slash 10k on the bay if you you guys should do that we're in the age of the internet um it's it's not free money because i'm providing um subscription-based content so if you create a patreon you offer people um information they will pay you and it's not sleazy because they literally subscribe to you so you're providing them exactly what they're looking for back in the day like if you were an artist like a king or like a prince or something would like buy you and you'd live in his house and make art. That's how like artists used to exist before. Um, so yeah, I like Patreon. I think everyone should have one. You should create one. I know Margaret from, um, what's Margaret's channel? Somebody put that in the, um, in the chat. Margaret's starting a Patreon. She's getting a little bit of heat because people are like, why are you trying to charge us? And I'm like, because it's hard to make content. It's okay. I don't mind that she charges. I don't think there are any YouTubers that don't have AdSense turned on, right? Because it's nice. Nice to get a little bit of a paycheck for making free content like this. Um, social media does fast track it because you can, um, you can basically network with people who have already done it. 19th Vintage, this is Robert. He's really cool. Um, I kind of know Robert because I've talked to him a bunch in my uh, online. So it's, he's given me some good hacks. He also has a YouTube channel, but he's really slipping on making videos. So 
Um, Flossin Daily says, do I follow tech and sports? No, but I should. Um, see, look, DJ, I have a group called eBay MBA. You should join it on Facebook. Join that group and then find other people to meet with every week. Uh, I charge for that service, but you can do it for free. Like, just join my Facebook group. Don't bitch. Don't complain about eBay's after you. Don't complain that your store has been turned off. It's not true. Your store hasn't been turned off. eBay makes money when you sell things. Okay. All right, Jennifer, thank you for stopping by. Yeah, everyone hit the like button. That would really help me out. You have a 19 or 1893 McLaughlin Bros board game called Uncle Sam's Mail. Hmm. Selling old fragile games, like if you don't know how to ship something fragile, I recommend you go to the FedEx store and have them ship your first one. Pay the 20 or $30 or whatever it costs to pack something super fragile and watch how they do it and whip, whip out your phone and record it and then do the same thing because they um, insure the packages if they pack it, I think. So um, I, I recommend that as a hack because I sold a freaking lampshade. I sold this giant lampshade that was like extremely fragile. It was glass and it was a Thomas Kincaid um, lampshade um, and I did not know how to pack it. And I took it to the UPS store and it cost $40 to pack it, um, but it was worth it because I understand now how to pack things, how to float items, how to double box. I learned that all in one $40 class. Okay, cool. Um, okay, here's another pro tip. Ask the managers at Goodwill what to buy. Ask the manager at the retail store what to buy. I didn't know what to buy at the thrift store when I first started, and I asked the manager, and they just told me. Resellers like to buy men's shoes. Okay, I'll take a look. Resellers like to buy electronics, like video games. Okay, take a look. Video gamers, video games are easy to sell, so people always go there first. So I literally learned from the manager. They told me where resellers hang out. They also told me what doesn't sell, so I could use that to my advantage and kill it. Um, what's up, Tina? Yeah, everything is on YouTube. So switch over to the live feed. You guys can see my screen. Um, OK, so the third tip for what to buy is to sell what you know. Um, and that's something that is super, super critical. If you know something that people don't know, you're going to be a better buyer. Um, I've, done a, I've had a lot of hobbies in my life, so I understand. I know a little bit about a lot of different things. I consider myself a generalist, which is great for eBay uh, because eBay is a little bit of everything. Uh, and then the last thing is, I'm just gonna do a little bit of shameless self-promotion. If you join my Patreon group, I will, I will manually place you in a group with, with six other people that you meet with every week online on a call. Uh, I am gonna limit that to 50 people because my time is super valuable, but I really enjoy uh, Patreon because I'm going to connect it, right? You can either do the work yourself for free or you can just pay and I'll do the work for you. I will put you in a group with the five other people who are motivated. So you can do that. That's the way to do it. Um, you can pay to take a shortcut or you can do it yourself. All the information out there is out there for free. Nothing I'm teaching you is, I'm not even teaching you. I'm just sharing what I'm doing right now. Um, nothing that I'm doing is original. It's all from other people. Okay, cool. So I am done. If you guys have any questions, um, hit me up. Oh, yeah. Uh, right now, and let's go over some questions. Um, oh, I don't, I'm not sure why it's not showing up. I'll change the Facebook link. It's it's just eBay MBA. Search for it in the Facebook group. It should pop up. Um, I would definitely separate it in the little bags if you're going to ship out a game piece by piece. I do that with lots of different things. And... Um, I don't know if Tanya is still in the chat, but she shipped the cookie jar in two separate parts because it was fragile. The top, the, the jar lid and the jar separately to prevent it from breaking. So um, let's see. Red Rock, is anybody from Colorado? There's a lot of people in Colorado that resell. It is a, like a honey hole. Um, like Hustle Jimmy, do you guys follow him on Instagram? He, I think, I don't know if I'm giving out too much information, but he moved to Colorado because the thrifting is good. Or actually, I should say the thrifting sucks in Colorado so that people don't go there. Um, eBay, MBA, yeah, I'll type it in the chat. Um, it's still screen share, right? So let's see here. 
go to UAMBA and take a look. Actually, I'm not going to log in. I don't even have Facebook really set up on my computer because it wastes too much time. Um, okay, here. Also, uh, one last idea um, before I answer some questions is, yeah, I am trying this um, charity thing. So on my Loki Husky store, the majority of the items are 10% um, of the money goes to Oakland Children's Hospital, which is pretty cool. I like uh, Oakland Children's Hospital. It doesn't matter. Actually, it doesn't really match the low-key Husky brand, which is recycled goods. Um, but that's okay. I'm, I'm going to stick with it because I just I, I didn't think of I, there wasn't any other charities that were local that really made sense to me. Um, I know, right, John? I'm I'm waiting for my girlfriend. You guys should be you guys should not be watching me right now. Actually, to be honest, um, a lot of yard sales are over on the East Coast. Um, eBay has crush resistant small boxes, six by six by six. Uh, oh, yeah, I like the six by six by six boxes. Is that what you're talking about? Um, who is who on um, is who on YouTube? But yeah, you guys know there's a lot there's a lot to it. Like um, online business is very cool. You don't have to do just eBay. You can do other stuff like merch. For me. Um, like I, I'm looking for things that are that as I get more money, I'm putting the money into stuff that makes me more money. Like I have a rental car business. Um, I have I'm, I'm spending money with Glenn Zubia at Hustler Hacks to make my shirts for merch. So I'll upload all the designs. Hopefully, I'll have hundreds of really good designs on merch making me money. I'll have real estate, whatever. Um, okay, guys, I am going to uh, jump off now. Um, wow, holy crap, 221 people on Instagram. That's insane. Um, I'm going to jump off now. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. If you have any emails or you have any questions, email me at 10kontheBay at gmail.com. Uh, everybody have a great weekend. Peace out.